Okay, let's talk about improving your layer quality on your Ender 2. So this is a fractal vase that I printed on my Ender in vase mode, and it came out remarkably well. Um, here are some gears that I'm prototyping, and these uh, I made with a new version of my helical gear add-in for Fusion 360 that I'm working on, and they operate really smoothly. Um, and all I did to condition these gears after printing them was I ran them around by hand for a while. It was more than I would have liked to have run around by hand, but they did break in really smoothly. There were just a couple of little blobs on uh, some of the teeth. Um, and if you look at the exterior layer quality, you can see the layers are very consistent. This was printed with 0.2 millimeter layer height. Um, the variations you see are actually, the color variations are actually from the spool of filament. This was a transitional roll, so it was transitioning from the spool, from pink to gray. Uh, so here you're starting to see a mix of those colors. And here's another gear. Um, this one's pretty extreme with a really high helical angle, uh, so very heavy overhang. And the layer quality is just incredible. So some of this is due to mechanical and some of this is due to slicer settings. So I'll start by talking about the mechanical and then we'll go into the slicer on the computer. Um, this part was also printed with 0.2 millimeter layer height. Uh, there's no infill but there's three perimeters and it came out incredibly well. All right let's turn this thing around. It shouldn't come as a surprise but to get good layers your Z assembly is critical. So what I mean by this is if this coupler is bound up, if your Z motor is misaligned with the, the threaded bushing in here, I'm not sure what that's actually called, <laughs> um, then you're going to have some Z artifacts. So a common problem with these couplers is they mount really well to the motors. Um, but it's really easy to install your rod contacting the motor shaft and that prevents this coupler from being able to flex like it should. There should be a gap in there and this should be allowed to flex. Um, also uh, a very common problem is the rod and the top hole are not close enough in diameter. So as you tighten these down you're actually forcing this rod off center. I'll link to a, a rather a somewhat old video down below um, that I found very insightful uh, where he goes into a lot of detail on the problems he was having and things he did to improve his print quality and this coupler was a major contributor to poor print quality. Now this that was not an Ender 2. Um, the Ender 2 I found that mine uh, when I had built it and installed it that as the X carriage assembly moved up and down the tip of the rod up here would displace about two millimeters and at first I thought that displacement was due to the Z motor being needing to move out but what I found as I was iterating it actually needed to move to the side just a little bit so this assembly up here on the X carriage was not in line with the frame and in fact if I line the camera up carefully you might be able to tell it's a bit to the left, that whole assembly is. So I designed and I share on Thingiverse uh, this motor mount and there's actually slots in there that allow the motor to move side to side a little bit. Uh, and in the side I have M3 grub screws, you could just use any old M3 screw um, to help lock that motor into position side to side and it's in there really well. And that helps a lot. Another slightly surprising thing uh, that improved print quality for me was actually the spool diameter adapter. Um, what I found without this adapter on here, as I watched the spool move, it would kind of hang a little bit and then it'd go, you know, and, and loosen the filament and stuff. I didn't think much of it. But after I designed and printed this, um, my filament unspools much more smoothly now. And that means that the extruder is able to more reliably pull the filament without those little binds. So my ex that actually got me some of the most noticeable 
uh, wall quality improvements, uh, second only to fixing my Z motor uh, side to side placement. Um, now, a lot of people talk about calibrating your extrusion steps per millimeter and they go through this process where they mark the filament and they extrude it and they do some math and they calculate a new E steps per millimeter and I did that and I didn't find I didn't find it gave me the results I was hoping for so I came up with kind of an alternative uh, calibration method and so what I did was I just sliced a kind of an arbitrary calibration cube here um, it's a 20 by 20 by 10. The specifics aren't that important. Uh, and you can see the wall's thickness measures 0.36 millimeters. And I printed this telling the slicer it's 1.75 millimeter filament and to make a wall thickness of 0.4 millimeters. And this is what it gave me. So let's head to the computer and uh, see how to use a spreadsheet I came up with to help correct this. Okay, here we are at the computer, and I will share the spreadsheet down below. This is my 3D printer calibration calculator spreadsheet, and you're free to edit any yellow field. Um, all other fields should be restricted and protected from editing, uh, and I will talk through this. So when I sliced that calibration cube I showed you, I told the slicer the filament diameter is 175, and to use a line width of 0.4 millimeters exactly and we measured about a 0.36 millimeter wall thickness so the slicer thought it was squirting out enough plastic to make a 0.4 millimeter wall but in fact it was only squirting out enough to make the 0.36 millimeter wall so there's a few ways we can correct this in the slicer alone we could tell it to use 111 percent flow rate or we could say you know hey the filament diameter is actually 1.66 millimeters. And either of these solutions will work just fine. We could then reslice our model, print it, and I can tell you without looking because I have looked multiple times before, um, we will get really close to 0.4 millimeters. I mean, within, you know, it, it will measure typically between 0.39 and 0.41, which I call spot on. Um, now, if you want to correct the problem more permanently, and if you want to actually be able to measure the diameter of your filament with calipers in a meaningful way, then I suggest we actually calibrate our printer's E-steps per millimeter. So I have, I'm using Arduino Studio for this, but you can use any serial terminal, including OctoPrint, um, to connect to your printer. And what I have set up in front of me is I have my old controller out of my Ender 2 just sitting in front of me on the desk. It's not plugged into anything. You know, min temp triggered yet. There's no thermal sensor plugged into this board. Um, so when it comes up, it will spit out its configuration. And we'll look right here. Steps per unit, M92XYZE. And it's this E that we're interested in. So E93. In the spreadsheet, we put that right here. And then what we can do is we can copy this G code here and we paste it here and we send that command. And then if I issue an M503, this G code command tells it to print the configuration. And we look at the updated values and we can see we've updated this to E103.33. Now the old value isn't really gone just yet because if we turn your, the printer off, we just connect power from it and repower it, um, the old value will come back. But to commit this value permanently, we write M500 and what this does is it writes the configuration into EEPROM. Okay, now I will unplug my board and I will plug it back in and I will get it to say hello. There we go. And look at that, E93. So unfortunately, it looks like the stock enter board um, does not allow you to commit values to its EEPROM. That's kind of irritating. So alternatively, what we could do is we could take this command right here and we can make that part of our printer profile. So in slick 3R, we can go to custom G code and in the start G code, we can just 
paste this in as our first line. Um, another thing we can do, and this might actually be a better idea, is if we go to our filament settings, we can enter custom G code right here. And now for this filament, we will set our E steps per millimeter for this filament only. Okay. Um, this M900, if you're wondering, that's linear advanced. That is not enabled on the star stock Ender 2 hardware. Um, this is something that uh, you'll either need to modify your uh, Marlin version on your Ender, or you'll need to be running um, an alternate mainboard. Okay, so now when we slice a model, um, our extrusions per E-steps will be set, and we should get appropriate extrusion rates. And there you have it, calibrated extrusion. Well, that'll just about do it for this video. I'll follow up in a future video on how to set up a Slick 3R for your Ender 2. Um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment down below. Catch you next time.